we I'd like to call to order the work session on May 21st. <coughs> it is now 5 p.m. Council on Laurel Town will not be here. We only have one item on the work session. I would like council to refrain from asking questions until the staff presentations are complete. So at 3.1, staff will provide the city council with an overview of the Water Conservation Committee and staff recommendations and seek council's input and direction. Our presenter here is our water resource manager, Mark Holmes. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, your Water Conservation Committee and staff are excited to be here this evening to present and discuss the proposed water conservation recommendations. We're excited to. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to introduce you to Mario Columbia, Chairman of the Water Conservation Committee, to my right. You know, he'll be a co-presenting and also in attendance are some of the members of the Water Conservation Committee in the audience. The genesis for the Water Conservation Committee began with a recommendation from the Water Planning Committee report that was adopted in June of 2015. And I quote, the Water Planning Committee voted to recommend directing staff to consider implementation of another water citizen group to continue the efforts made by the Water Planning Committee on the issues of sustainability and conservation. Thank you. <coughs> so while the Water Planning Committee was completing its work, the Integrated Water Master Plan was looking at the city's water future needs. So this is a chart taken from the adopted 2016 Integrated Water Master Plan Executive Summary. You probably remember that from the Integrated Water Master Plan Review. Um, the Integrated Water Master Plan identified the city's current total renewable water supplies at slightly more than 21,000 acre feet shown in the left pie chart. Um, each pie slice represents a different flavor of the renewable water supplies within the city's portfolio. The Integrated Water Master Plan calculated the build-out water demands for the city at slightly more than 135,000 acre feet, as shown by the right pie chart. The Integrated Water Master Plan proposed a slightly more than 35,000 acre foot need for additional water conservation, and that's indicated by the orange pie slice within the right pie chart, and by build-out, which is predicted around the year 2085. If the conservation efforts are successful, then an additional 40,500 acre feet of new water supplies will be needed for build out of the city. In February of 2016, the city council created a water conservation committee through a resolution. And in June of 2016, council appointed 11 members and two alternates to the new committee. Members were selected by the council boards, commissions and committee appointments subcommittee. And with that, I'll turn over to Mario Columbia to discuss the committee and its efforts. Mayor Lord, members of the council, my name is Mario Columbia. And again, it's a great honor and privilege to participate and present to you water conservation topics as the chairman of the Water Conservation Committee. The Water Conservation Committee is a strong committee that is composed of diverse stakeholders that represent homeowners, associations, real estate, developers, builders, landscapers, representatives from the landscaping industry, residential and non-residential landowners. The committee was intentionally designed to be inclusive of all water provider areas within the city. However, the majority of the members reside within the city's water service area. The purpose of the Water Conservation Committee outlined in the bylaws included, one, understand regulatory requirements and the city's water usage patterns and the outdoor water conservation potential based on the city's latest water conservation plan. Two, review impacts of proposed future water conservation initiatives on stakeholders and ensure the initiative's success. Three, Prioritize recommendations and determine costs on re return on investment as data permitted. And four, recommend a prioritized set of conservation actions that could include changes to existing guidelines, ordinances, programs, and further studies needed as part of the five-year plan before July 2018. The Water Conservation Committee met for a total of 19 times since July of 2016. During the first year, the committee discussed water usage, water supplies, 
and conservation activities. The committee also toured uh, several city utility facilities and received direct information of the scale of capital and operations needed to manage and serve water to the community. The committee also received presentations from the development services, engineering and parks departments regarding water management. The committee also received a presentation by one of the largest HOAs in the city. We also had several discussions about climate change uh, and drought impacts regarding our state and had the Arizona Municipal Water Users Association present to the committee regarding what conservation programs others were working on throughout Arizona and other states. Several schools from the Arizona State University presented to the committee to include the School of Sustainability, the Decision Center for Desert City, and the School of Future Innovation for Sustainability. Presentations included topics such as one, advanced technologies, and how they could assist water customers in managing their outdoor water usage. Two, mitigate strategies for the urban heat island effect and city-wide tree planting. And of course, three, water conservation strategies. The committee and staff then started developing concepts and ideas for the discussion. Okay. Water, the Water Conservation Committee and staff discussed several topics and were further aggregated into 12 final proposed recommendations. The proposed recommendations were prioritized based on a general scale of low, medium, and high value for labor, costs, and water savings. Before turning this over to Mark, it's becoming a progressively more apparent to me that if we want water conservation to matter, to spread, and to last, then the structures in which our leaders do their work must make water conservation a priority. Therefore, we all need to remain focused as we move forward in accepting this water conservation transformation with the understanding that this required transformation doesn't happen overnight as it requires intention, practice, and requires one thought. Let's be water smart, not water short. So with that said, I will turn this back over to Mark to discuss the 12 proposed recommendations. Thanks, Mario. Mm -hmm. So this is a table showing the 12 final recommendations in priority order with predicted, again, general labor costs and water savings for each recommendation. Each recommendation will be further analyzed at the time of being proposed to show actual labor costs, water savings, cost savings, and return on investment and or net present value calculations based on the details of the recommendation program or project at that time. The recommendation will then be proposed through the annual budget process or to council for further action. And now I'll go ahead and go into each one of the recommendations in further detail. Recommendation number one, this is to develop a new landscape design standards. The goal of the recommendation is to create an outdoor landscape design committee with appropriate stakeholders to develop new landscape design plans that would reduce the outdoor water usage to the greatest extent possible. Determine and aim for a citywide outdoor water reduction of 50% of the residential outdoor landscapes from adoption to build out of the city while adhering to all the city's master plans. The recommendation has seven sub points. Number one, the new committee will review the city's comprehensive master plans, again, to ensure the core values of the city are maintained. Number two, while the city currently meets the Phoenix Active Management Area Conservation requirements, the proposed committee will evaluate new potential accepted plants, trees, shrubs, and grasses that can use 15 to 25% less water. <laughs> Number three, develop new low water use landscape styles. Number four, the committee will review existing city codes to ensure maximum water conservation. Number five, the committee will review existing street design standards and make recommendations that would include, A, develop recommendations and modify, modify street designs that can passively capture and utilize more rainwater for landscape watering. B, determine costs and benefits, return on investment, and net present value analysis. And C, identify funding sources and impacts to budgets. Number six, the committee will coordinate efforts with the citywide tree plan, of which I will cover shortly. 
and seven, the new committee will go will be co-managed, could be co-managed by development services, engineering, and public works departments. If this recommendation was successful, it alone has the potential of meeting the integrated water master plans recommended 35,000 acre foot reduction in conservation. It should be noted that the development services has already embarked on this effort to revise the landscape design standards of which this recommendation could be incorporated into their efforts. Recommendation number two, evaluate a conservation rate structure. The goal is to determine if conservation pricing would have a positive effect for increasing efficiency and conservation. And secondly, ensure that any conservation pricing is fair and equitable. There are three sub points to the recommendation. Explore water rate structures that would promote increased efficiencies and conservation. Number two, examine seasonal rates, new rate tiers, and rate stabilization. And three, determine cost savings to customers with conservation as opposed to what rates would be without conservation or status quo. As a side note, you may have heard water customers express their paying more for less. It is true that water rates continue to increase every year, but the cost of water conservation and increasing efficiencies within a water utility will help keep the water rate increases as low as possible. Using less water keeps capital costs down over time. By stretching the lifespan of sources, supply sources, water utilities can avoid or delay the cost of securing new supplies, building and maintaining new infrastructure, and treating more water and wastewater. By tracking and analyzing efficiencies through water conservation, it's possible to show how much more water consumers are saving with water conservation. The finance department is, will be looking at and evaluating a new five-year rate plan in the very near future and this recommendation could be incorporated into that effort. Recommendation number three is to develop a citywide tree plan. The goal has two parts, provide an optimal tree shade and artificial shade coverage plan that would use tree species that require little or no supplemental watering once established. And number two, provide urban heat island buffering for the city. The recommendation has three sub points. Number one, evaluate the amount of shade and reduced turf that would, be not, that would not be planted in tree shade zones or provide shade for other landscapes and reduce watering needs. Number two, determine and aim to reduce the overall outdoor landscape water budget by 15%. Number three, ensure the timing of the citywide tree plan with the landscape design committee. Uh, efforts to ensure these two plans are seamlessly uh, brought together and blended. As a side note, According to the Arizona State University research with the Phoenix metropolitan area, there are 290 gallons per month per household water use increase for every one degree Fahrenheit increase of average nighttime temperature. So you can imagine buffering urban heat island will save a lot of water. It's deadly. Mm -hmm. Recommendation number four, develop advanced metering infrastructure or AMI citywide. There are three subset three sub points to the goal. Number one, expand the advanced meter infrastructure AMI system citywide. Number two, require all new meters for new water service be AMI compatible. Well, the good news is utilities is already installing AMI compatible meters in all new water accounts. So we're meeting that objective. Goal number three, establish a customer portal that empowers customers to better understand and manage their water use. Build through technology that increases customer satisfaction lowers costs of service, and builds for long-term system improvements. And there's five subpoints to the recommendation. Number one, determine what is needed, infrastructure, funding, integration, and software for full system implementation. Number two, determine the real water savings. Number three, determine appropriate customer and utility software requirements. Number four, determine overall expenses, benefits, and return on investment. And five, determine if a partnership can be established with Liberty Utilities and EPCOR Water for the integration of their customers' real-time water use station data that can be incorporated into our AMI portal. Recommendation number five, expand community education. The goal is to establish water conservation education programs that promote awareness and provide specific strategies for outdoor efficiencies. And there are eight subpoints to the recommendation. Number one, target efforts for the highest water volume using customers. Number two, evaluate optimal media outlets and mes messaging content. Number three, 
Record and then distribute outdoor water saving techniques via the city website or YouTube videos. For example, demonstrating the home irrigation checkups, uh, irrigation controller use, irrigation systems, leak detection, and proper pool draining. All videos should be formatted for mobile device usage. Number four, market and broadcast city phone numbers for water waste reporting. Promote the use, number five, promote the use of public stuff app. Number six, promote partnerships with entities that use large amounts of water outdoors, such as schools, HOAs, et cetera. Number seven, annually review the adopted city plumbing codes and city de design standards and guidelines to ensure the promotion of water efficiencies. And number eight, highlight and promote success stories through the city that would provide interest for others to replicate. These success stories would in essence become the demonstration projects for the various types of water users throughout the city. Recommendation number six, develop new landscape incentives. The goal is to create a fair and equitable landscape incentive program that encourages residents, HOAs, and commercial properties to convert high water use landscapes to low water use landscapes or xeriscapes that use the most efficient landscape watering technologies. There are five sub points of the recommendation. Number one, develop a turf conversion incentive program. Number two, develop a smart irrigation controller incentive program that produce with products or devices based on the pilot project efforts, which I will outline shortly. Number three, determine what is needed for development and implementation. Number four, determine real water savings. And number five, determine overall expenses, benefits, and return on investments. Recommendation number seven is develop a pool committee. The goal is create an outdoor pool committee that would develop a plan that would implement an increased efficiency in citywide water usage to the greatest extent possible over a 10 year period. Determine an aim for a citywide outdoor aggregated pool water efficiency increase of 50% from adoption to build out of the city. Note, this goal is not suggesting a reduction in the number of pools, but increasing the efficiency of water used in outdoor pools. Recommendation, the Water Conservation Committee felt that not all of the right stakeholders were at the table and recommend to establish a special outdoor pool usage committee with stakeholders that are comprised of pool builders, home builders, development community, homeowners association, pool suppliers, residents of mixed age groups, Goodyear Parks and Recreation Department, landscape architects, and the Economic Development Department. Recommendation number eight, development, develop new customer friendly services. The goal is to provide a more personalized approach to assist customers in the sustainable use of water and access to water conservation programs. Recommendation has five subparts. Number one, determine what is needed for the program, funding time, demands, permissions, data collection, logistics, equipment, training and staffing needs. Number two, determine the realized benefits and savings. Number three, increase customer access to one-on-one -on -one services to personally assist with sustainable water use. Tasks may include A, home leak detection information, B, preparation of individual home water budget based on lot size, house size, and number of people living in the home. C, provide tips, list of low water use landscape plants, list of water sense fixtures, appliances, and how to remove turf. D, Assist with rebate programs if or when adopted. Applications, processing and filling out forms. E, specific, answering specific residential conservation questions. And F, outreach to high water users. Number four, customers may grant permission in writing to the city allowing public work staff to turn off customer water service in the event of a leak before notification. Current procedure is that staff must get permission from the customer prior to shut off. And lastly, provide either as a bill insert or separate mail or email showing customers water usage compared to others in the subdivision or building size, similar to your electric utility usage. Recommendation number nine, water main flushing program. The goal is to explore new technologies that conserve and recycle water and enhance water quality within the distribution system as part of a system wide water main flushing program. There's four subparts to the recommendation. As a side note, 
Currently, when water is flushed from a water main, it is discharged to the ground as an industry best practice. So, number one, determine what is needed. Funding, contracts, et cetera, for inline mobile filtration system, systems that could recirculate the water back to the water main. Number two, determine real water savings. And number three, determine overall expenses, benefits, and return on investment. And four, determine the non-revenue water losses and develop financial systems for charging entities that currently fall outside the current customer parameters when performing hydrant testing, dust control of streets, or other uses. Recommendation number 10, develop a smart controller pilot project. The goal is to determine the average percentage of water savings realized by homes using smart irrigation controller technology within the city of Goodyear. And there's sub, there four sub points to the recommendation. Number one, establish a pilot program of 100 smart irrigation controllers. Number two, determine the logistics of how the data will be collected and analyzed and through private property permissions and data acquisition. Number three, Analyze real water savings from the pilot and calculate future benefits if the pilot was expanded. And lastly, determine the return on investment of an, if an incentive program was established in the future. <clears throat> Recommendation number 11, expand the home irrigation checkups. The goal is to determine if an effective strategy to implement and expand the home irrigation checkup program to the greatest number of customers. And there's three sub points to the recommendations. Number one, reestablish the home irrigation checkup program with initial focus on the highest 1% water using residential accounts, and then focus on the top 10%, 20%, and then next highest water using customers, and so on. Number two, determine needs for the program, funding, time demands, permissions, data collection, logistics, equipment, training, and staffing needs. And lastly, determine the realized benefits and water savings. And recommendation number 12, develop water intensive exceptions. The goal, the Water Conservation Committee felt that the city should not conserve at all costs, but have exceptions to certain water intensive activities where the, greatest, the greater good of the city is considered and may have value that exceeds the water resources, the water efficiencies, and conservation values. The recommendation is, through a city leadership and interdepartmental process, discuss, develop, and evaluate a best management approach or policy that would provide exceptions for water intensive act activities choosing to locate within Goodyear or creating water intensive internal projects. In order to ensure the plan success, the Public Works Department recommends it take ownership of the plan to propose and coordinate the activities for each recommendation. And at this time, we look forward to hearing your comments and direction on the recommendations that will be incorporated into current activities and future city projects, policies, and guidelines. Staff also requests that council provide staff direction on how you would like to be periodically updated on the implementation of these recommendations. And now it's not going to my last slide. There we go. That concludes our presentation. We'd be happy to address any questions you may have or discuss any recommendations in further detail and receive further direction from you. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mark, and thank you, Mario. I just realized they're the new M and M's. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we we welcome this information. So I'm going to let Carlson start. Um, let's see, who wants to start first? I have four pages, so I can go Well, you're last. not going to start first. <laughs> and I'm going to say that if you have four pages, you can't give, four, you can't give all your questions because we want this interactive. Oh, so know. if you just spill out all yours, then none of us else can, can weigh yeah, on. So let, yeah, well, okay, I'm just, you know, I'm just okay. putting the rules out on the table tonight, okay? <laughs> all right, so, Joe, go ahead. I don't have four pages. <laughs> Listen, I want to thank you and the committee Thanks. for being so thorough with this recommendation, uh, to me, a, a gallon saved is a dollar we don't have to, I mean, a gallon saved is a gallon we don't have to produce. And, and it's a very thorough plan. And I want to thank you. You guys put a lot of effort into it. Uh, from, from my perspective, um, what you have, to me, to make it really successful, and I agree that Public Works has to take it, but the marketing plan that gets the buy-in from the general public so they understand the importance of why this 
why this program is needed, why it's important for us to focus on conservation. If you get the buy-in from the public on top of implementing these plans, I think you're gonna have a major success. So I think from a marketing standpoint, uh, that also has to be a, a top priority in getting that message out there. Quick question though on leakage through mains, water mains and that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's easy, difficult to determine to try to, you know, from some of that that you lose through leakage through the transmission system? Is that something that's, and again, I'm not that familiar with the mechanics of that, but is that something that's, that's manageable? Yes, um, we are currently required every year on our annual reports to the state, uh, Department of Water Resources, how much leakage has occurred. So we have to account for that from the point of the, the meter at the well site where the water is produced to the point of delivery to the customer, we account for that. And there's additional uh, leak detection equipment that could be further analyzed where leaks are occurring to try and, and our operation teams do use that technology to try and repair and go out and identify leaks. That's is that significant? Uh, leakage? The state mandates that every a water provider be less than 10%. We are less than 10%. I don't recall the exact. I think we're somewhere between 6 and 7 if I, I can get the specific number right. No, that's, that's, that's fine. But we are under the mandate on there. And, again, I want to truly thank uh, you and the committee. Uh, it's very thorough, really well thought out, and uh, um, looking forward to updates. Thank you. Now, any of you have any questions as to what his question was? I mean, anything attached to that? All right. Let's go on to the next one. Bill? Yeah, my questions are different. Well, that's uh, it. That, but I good. mean, if it is yeah. different and one of the council people can weigh in on that, let's do it at this time. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead, Bill. Perfect. Again, uh, to reiterate what Joe said, thank you very much. Um, I know there's a number of the committee members sitting out there, but um, this, was a, this was a big effort. So uh, appreciate that. Um, I did uh, your recommendation number one, which I think is a citizen committee. Is that correct? Is that what I took away from that? Mm -hmm. Yes, that was a committee of various stakeholders to develop new landscape design standards. And maybe I'm getting hung up on the terminology um, because it would seem to me that uh, staff, developer, builder, committee might be better served in that capacity. Is that the kind of stakeholders that you're referring to? Or are you talking about ratepayers uh, and the quote unquote average citizen. I want to add to what he's saying. And so um, <clears throat> would we have people, because as, as we were looking through this, I kept thinking about technology and how it comes out. And uh, as a resident, we just don't, don't, we have conversation about a leak, but we don't have anything that says, okay, what can you do? And what, what's the newest tech? Uh, so that's, so that goes along with that. Anybody else in that part? That, Bill, go ahead. So the committee um, actually um, in this uh, recommendation had established uh, who those stakeholders would be. Would you like to hear them? Okay, sure. so um, landscape architects, home builders, land developers, trade association, Arizona Landscape Contractors Association, Arizona Municipal Water Users Association, Water Conservation Manager, Homeowners Association, local residents, and the city departments that would include <clears throat> development services, Parks and Recreation, Engineering, Economic Development, Water Resources, and, uh, and those that would be uh, part of the city's, uh, if we have landscape architect on staff or th thereabouts, that type of uh, position to develop a recommendation plan. Okay, perfect. Uh, I obviously uh, overlooked that part um, because I, I think one of the things that we benefit from is industry expertise. Um, and the other thing that we are hurt by is the size of a committee. A committee of 30 or 40 people gets to be too much to try to get anything actually accomplished. So it um, sounds like you're headed in the right direction. And the other, the other question that I had was, there seems to be a conflict between the concept of turf conversion and urban heating. We know turf keeps everything cooler but if we want to get rid of the turf, then we're going to increase the urban heating piece. So I was, it seemed through the presentation that there were, I don't want to say a conflict, but there's kind of a mental conflict between those, those two. So can you talk a little bit about, you know, if we get rid of the grass, what, how does that going to affect the urban heating? And if we put more grass in, aren't we really going to reduce the urban heating and vice versa? So that's, that's a great question, um, Customer Stip. The, the goal is... Um, there's two things happening at once. You're absolutely correct. We have um, an incentive to try and 
reduce grass to some efficient level of grass. But at the same time, <clears throat> the citywide tree plan has a goal to uh, look at how much of the city's percent of its, its space would be covered with shade bearing uh, provided by trees. <clears throat> so if, let's say for example, that's 20% or some percent can be ach achieved by trees versus turf, there's a lot less water going for that type of heat buffering, low water use landscape of those tree materials that are more, uh, I'll say trees that are drought tolerant, low water use. Um, but those two, the, the landscape design, turf reduction and a tree plan, they all have to marry together and your point is, is well taken. They have to marry very well. So we're actually buffering the urban heat island and not increasing it by the reduction of turf in some areas. It might be replaced with trees that provide shade to then mitigate what the turf has been removed. All right, Joanne, why don't you start asking some of your questions? <laughs> okay, well. well I'm, I'm gonna let you ask them all, but you're gonna do well, them in thank sequence. You. I, I, you know what, I really, I really um, appreciated everything that you all have done. And um, this is obviously extremely timely right now too for our state. And so as we grow and go into the future, you guys are, are right on in the, in the ideas that you are coming up with. Um, so, you know, just for even the citizens that are listening, some of the things that, you know, came out in this report, I, I think are worth repeating. And, and one of them is that 60% annually um, produced of our water is outdoors. And I think that's really critical of, of understanding for everybody. But, you know, the fact that you um, said if we can increase water efficiency by 1% a year until built out, that is a great goal to, to try to um, come to. And, and I really like that. Um, to start some of the, I guess, the questions that I had, as I was looking at this and there was um, statements of the 2008 plan, I guess, kind of coincide in there. And so um, some of the things I, I wondered, have we done all of those things that were in that 2008 plan? Because I wasn't sure. So within the, uh, the, the, the draft plan that you reviewed in your packet, um, the updates are actually highlighted with the red text on the right. Um, if it was completed, um, it was indicated by it was completed or updated, and then what, the, what the, the remedy was to accomplish that activity or if it was still ongoing. If you did not see red updates, it means that it has not been accomplished. If it just had the old date that it was predicted to occur in the 2008 Water Conservation Plan, that date is, has not, that plan has not been updated, so that, that date still is, is there so there's still some there's still some work to do and um, and I'm glad that you know public works will be taking this on and and um, I don't know Sandra Rohde had been our water conservation person is there a new entity just for this because this is this is a lot of work this entire plan so I was wondering about that. Yes, you know. we actually um, have a water demand advisor. Ray Diaz is our new water demand advisor, and he's been with the city uh, well over 10 years. Um, okay. Ray's here, right there. So he is managing the demand side. We have a water supply advisor looking at the production and supply of water. We also have a water demand advisor looking at the demand side of the equation, which is the use of water and the various users. We do have that. Right. Well, I noticed that goal one um, is critical and timely to fire station um, building right now. That was within your priority three, I believe, within the event. So we had some of those items that I see are so timely right now, and I, I appreciate that. You want, do you want me no, to just, stop? I'll give you another one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass it on. Okay. Um, let's see. We already asked that. You know, um, some of the ideas that I thought as you go forward with this and, and citizen input and how we're going to show our citizens and our businesses um, ideas. You know, I think when we're um, designing right-of-ways and this list of landscape items to use, that's a perfect way of showing in our own rights-of-ways and in school rights-of-ways, things like that, of saying, if you, if you have this look, not only are you establishing, you know, what we're trying to accomplish, but um, you're showing other residents of, hey, that looks cool. I can do that in my yard, and it's water efficient. So, so those are, are great ways to do it. But I think also by having some kind of contests that you were to say, or even working with landscape companies or greenhouses and saying, you know what, if we were to have some homeowner that said, I'm willing to get rid of my grass, 
but you know, I don't have the money to put in this. You know, maybe some kind of contest will get you know that that um, feeling of wanting to to do something new. Just to interject in that I did do that in the in the state of Arizona. We've done that. The city has done that. Not, I don't think ours did, but I've seen it in the air uh, mm -hmm. in the Phoenix area and some other areas. Have had small programs so like that, that. Yeah, um, and they were very effective. I understand. So yeah. Well, and and it's it was showing in there that. That Gilbert has been working on this for two decades, and and back to, you know, they were able to to lower it be, uh, by 5.8 percent because of their conservation. Well, I think the new uh, construction is already lowered because yeah. they don't aren't allowed to put the grass in the big mm -hmm. amounts of grass. Isn't that correct? Is that is that universal or is that just? I know we can't have a creek. Well, <laughs> you have a little place for your dog, and that's about it. So. Mm -hmm. Within the active management area, the Phoenix Active Management, you have to meet conservation requirements, <clears throat> whether you're, whatever provi water provider you're in. Obviously, historic um, uh, homes that were built at certain time frames may be grandfathered in, um, or that if they have certain irrigation, like if you're an SRP, you might have flood irrigation and so forth. But um, there are requirements. Um, they must be met. And of course, HOAs may have further requirements if they want to sell a product that's maybe more sustainable or water efficient. To avoid high water uh, bills to their customers, it might be a different um, market for that versus some that want to have a lot of requirements for, for turf. Right. It may vary. So I'll turn to another council. Anything you have, Councilman Hemsworth? That's in general. Do you want to ask anything now? You would just want to be a part sure. of this. Yeah, just, go ahead. My turn. I'll go. Yeah, so I just wanted to say uh, thank you to the to the um, committee. I know it was a long two year process. I appreciate all the dedication and all the hard work that was, all the ideas. There are a lot of great ideas that are actionable that we can actually take and, and use. I appreciate all the hard work. I know I went to at least one of your committee meetings. So that was pretty interesting too, to see you guys in action. So I thank you so much for the dedication and the, and helping us out with uh, our water future. Because to everybody else's point, it's, it's, it's very important and crucial for our build out and our development. And uh, it's something that we, we, have to, we have to look at. So, and it's, it's good for us to, to keep growing. So. As I looked at the uh, rollout plan, I thought that was was good. I don't know if we're if that's the proposed or if that's what you want to move things up or if that's how we plan on doing that. But uh, yeah, I'm on board with yeah all the ideas. I like the use of the defense, the technology and how you prioritized it and at least focusing on at least the the top the top four right away and and moving and we keep moving forward. So. Um, I think everybody asked, answered a lot of the same questions I had. So I just want to say thank you. So. Molly? Well, I just wanted to ask, have you actually, um, since you're getting into the nitty gritty in the weeds, so to speak, have you actually uh, done an assessment of how much grass is actually in Goodyear? We've actually, um, through Sandra Rode before she left, is working with a professor at ASU <clears throat> um, using geographic information systems to try and look at citywide total um, uh, square feet or acres of turf. We do have a lot of information from the developments. I, I don't recall off the top of my head if we have a comprehensive number at this point. I think we have a good, um, a good idea, an estimate of what exists out there through the work that was done already through with the com or work with team with ASU. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I know we don't have the amount of grass that Chandler has or Phoenix have, and we don't have really flood irrigation out here. So we're a complete different entity. And uh, I appreciate all of this. It's just almost overwhelming to think that one committee thinks they're going to be able to do all of this and to do it well, um, because it's going to take an awful lot of cooperation from an awful lot of people. Um, I think it's important that we continue to educate our residents on water conservation, not only just because Goodyear provides the southern end of the city with water, but we need to partner with Liberty, who does a huge bulk of the of the northern section. And in my bill every month, there's something about conservation. And uh, there's some number to call if I think I have a leak, they come out free. And they come out and check my meter, they do all of this. And I'm assuming that my city does the same thing for my city residents. And I think a lot of times we just need to continue to educate folks on that that thing, on that certain uh, education front. I think doing changing I, out the meters would be really good. I want Do to we have to pay for that? 
I'm sorry. I was writing down. I'm sorry. I missed your last. Go ahead. No, your last statement. I'm sorry. For the to change out the meters, does the city pay for the meters? And do we arbitrarily just change them out of just the southern section? Or are you proposing we edict it for all of the city and get Liberty on board? I mean, I don't know how you want this to work since we have two water companies. I think that um, I'm just going to, as a mayor, say that we have worked with Liberty in the past. Uh, and we've come together when there were some really problems and it takes time, but we seem to have worked. I know the city manager has met with Liberty this last week. Um, so kind of knowing that we're on this path um, so that we can communicate, but if we don't try. Oh, uh, no, I'm know. not saying don't okay. try, Mayor. Right. I don't even, I'm not even going there. I'm just thinking <clears throat> we're going to talk about the budget tonight. Some of this stuff's going to cost the city money, I think. I don't think it's all going to be free to do, and I don't think our residents are going to do it out of the goodness of their heart. So if we, if there's going to be a cost involved and we want to be proactive, we need to be able to figure out how we're going to fund it and where we're going to fund it and when we're going to fund it. So obviously we have missed this budget se session right. mm -hmm. for 18-19, and then we'll hopefully have figures to talk about in nineteen twenty. It's hard to say that. It's hard to think that next year or the year after. But I think it's a wonderful program. I would really love to have your points because I don't have all of the. I have the bullet points, but not the one, two, three, four, five, six under every one. And that's why I was so astounded when you kept going. So thanks, Mark. Those were very interesting. I want to add to the, the what she's sort of talking about is that I think the some of the basis of this is if the customer wants to lower their cost of their bill mm -hmm. this is one way that this is their prize this is not dollars we're handing you know cash in their hand but they're handing cash through their use of water so i think that's where they're coming from in this that, that they'll be looking what and i'm, I'm going to get back that's to you fine. but i want to ask this question so all right i've had a number of uh some of our visitors are here six months are canadians <laughs> And so we watch a couple of lawns and report the leaks and things, but they really don't understand what the equipment is under the ground. Mm -mm. And so my question is, is, um, is there new technology um, and drip service? You know, do I have the drip plan in your yard? Is there new technology when you uh, put water lines together so they don't break apart? Um, and those are the things that, if citizens knew what kind of uh, service to have and what type of product to sell. Mm -hmm. So more like the smart city does, you know, the latest and greatest, because it's lack of information. And, and uh, alliances and homeowners association and other things are such good resources to, they are. to get that mm -hmm. out. So, and then I'm gonna let Joanne talk. And, and have some <laughs> but that is foremost in my mind because that's where we, and I know it isn't a great percentage, uh, that you say that they lose, but we know we want them to water less now, okay, and be more effective in, in how they water their plants and the yard. Go ahead. No, you're right on. Uh, technology has come a long way in the last few years. Um, the technology to, to irrigate, their subterranean watering systems, the smart controllers. Most irrigation systems, you put them, they're on a timer and they go on for a certain <coughs> period of time and really nobody knows how much water you've used. So smart technology is to actually um, show you even on your smartphone that your timer, went, your, your watering system went on for one hour and you used 250 gallons. And you'll have that kind of information to empower your decision making of whether your plants, how much can decrease that down to a certain minimum amount of water your plants require. Um, so the technology, you're absolutely correct. Technology's come a long way. A lot of this is to look at technology, um, especially if we want to pilot the technology, mm -hmm. because we don't we don't have a lot of data. And you're absolutely correct. We're actually very efficient because we're so new. The plumbing codes are newer here, so we're very efficient. But we can still make improvements, and I think the technology is one of those smart uh, the automated metering infrastructure. Um, yes, that is that has some significant cost to retrofit the existing service area and those those preparations to look at those capital improvements will be forthcoming as part of that whole process in future budget analysis. But yes, technology is a big key factor and empowering the consumer to do exactly what you said, Mayor, is 
I can reduce my water bill. I can reduce the amount of water usage through a number of different ways, either looking at your landscape, if you're allowed to change it, if you're not in a restricted HOA or you still can meet your HOA, but change your landscape design, change your watering techniques, change your, your um, how you manage your water. No different than when, when the fuel got to $4 and people started driving more efficient cars. Um, no different, we made different choices and that's what will happen. But we do have a handle that some other areas would not have. We are a city and we have a committee and we can have demonstrations. We can have, you know, save your water, whatever you wanna call it and for the entire city to bring people in to say, this is the latest and greatest. And so make them part of decision-making and what the cost is and all of that. So I think, you know, we're in a good position to, to help the water committee uh, continue this. So, Joanne? You know what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna give you this because I don't wanna waste all of our time, but um, I, I really am very appreciative of everything that everyone's done. And Randy gave me this, this book, um, where the water goes, thank you, and I, I appreciate that. Um, but really, kind of actually on to what um, Wally had mentioned, and, and I'm, I'm in agreement because this is a great plan, and um, I agree in the, in the schedule. Um, I, I like the, the goal of increasing the tree camp canopy of 10% a year, but we don't know what this means and what this will cost. And so I think that as you look at this schedule, we really need that financial model that um, will help us with suggestions for the budget, for CIP. Is it gonna be a CIP line item that is water conservation? I mean, these are items that, you know, this is great potentials here and great ideas for our citizens. And, and you know, when I think about it, okay, black and white old TV shows, you know, you used to see the ladies would have their garden clubs and their rose contests. Well, you know what? We can have desert landscaping contests. That's the new thing, you know? And so it's just, you can make fun with it. Um, but when you, when you really go out there and tell everyone that 60% of our water usage is outside, that's why this may seem like lots of fun, but it's critical. And, um, and, I, and I'm very thankful, but uh, you know, um, we've got to figure out how we can uh, put this in the budget and make it a priority and, um, and it is a balance and we know that. So thank you for all you guys have done. Appreciate well, it. I think if we're gonna, uh, if, if, I don't think that we're gonna take giant steps to begin with. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that's what you're all thinking and saying the budget. And I think people are realistic uh, about budgets and what has to go into. So I don't wanna magnify this, but what, we're doing is finding a model that's gonna work, all right? And that's what you're at that point now and doing all this investigation. And then we can take, okay, how many steps can we take that first year? So I don't think even on this budget, we could really say, okay, we're gonna go do that. I think some of it's already happened when we talked about landscaping. Do you remember our discussion mm -hmm. about landscaping? Mm -hmm. We don't want all those bushes lining them on the streets anymore. You know, we wanna do them in groups of three. We want space in between them. We don't wanna be spending all that money on water, but we also want a better look. So that, that's already a part of it. But I just want to, everybody to stand that's here. We, I know Randy, you're back there. Randy Smith, Pete Tyke, Jennifer Barber, Jackson Mole, Mario, Mario, you're there. Uh, Marlon Booth, Jack Gilmore, Laura uh, Canino. I always Kano. did that wrong, you know that. <laughs> and Susan Kagan, where are you all? Would you stand so we can applaud you? The time that you've taken, the hours away from home and all your businesses and your work and all of that. But I see some smiles on your face. So I think you enjoyed working together because you were some from different organizations and neighborhoods and all of that. And so now you know what the council goes through, <laughs> <laughs> trying to give everybody in every neighborhood what they want and how they want to do it. But I really think this, this is going to, as the time goes on, we're going to see the light shine brighter and brighter and brighter on this. But as long as we have people like you and the council has a goal, and that's what we need to do. To me, I think we need to set the first, we have one goal, we know the percentage of water. Okay, we have, but we have to do a, uh, things that are workable and definable and that we can at the end go, yay, we did this much and next time we're gonna do this much. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. so 
Thank you. I, is this the last time you're going to come before us on something? You have a couple more times. Said June. Coming. I, I may have one, uh, June 11th. Um, I think right. we're going to have a little recognition for the Water Conservation Committee and um, some appreciation right. on okay. the communication item. Okay. Um, there may be one more uh, with okay. an agreement. We'll see. Hopefully they can get that done in time, but right. um, definitely not my last. All right. Thank well, you. that's just great. Mario, thanks for taking a chairmanship. I know how tough that can be and how time consuming that. So again, thank you everybody for that. It's 10 minutes. We have a meeting at six o'clock. We have to move up on the dais. So I'm going to adjourn this meeting.